types of documentaries. Like fiction films, documentaries can also be split into different categories according to their form. Poetic documentaries. These kind of documentaries which first appeared in the 1920s were a sort of reaction against both the content and the rapidly solidifying grammar of early fiction films. The documentaries presented in a poetic mode were fragmentary, impressionistic and lyrical with music as a key which hold the mo movie and tone of the story together. These kind of documentaries moved away from continuity editing and instead organized images of the material world by means of association and patterns. Well-rounded characters, lifelike people were absent. Instead, people appeared in these films as entities that are found in material world. Poetic documentaries usually emphasize uh, some aspects of the person's life and present these via music, camera, shots, angles and the editing. It can also be quite artistic in the way it is presented. These documentaries have a central topic which is personal to the people involved, usually the presenter and interviewees. The examples for the type includes Joris Ivan's Rain of 1928, whose subject is passing summer shower over Amsterdam, Oscar Fitchinger abstract animated film, Francis Thompson's NYNY of 1957, a city symphony film, and Chris Marker's Sans Soleil, of 1982 also fits well into this list. Expository documentaries. A very traditional form of documentary style, they explain about social issues assembled into an argumentative frame with an authoritative narration voice over, often termed as voice of God. They speak directly to the viewer, proposing a strong argument and point of view. Trying to persuade the viewer, the commentary often sounds objective and all-knowing. Images are not often dominant, but largely exist to advance the presented argument. The language used insists the viewers to read the images in a certain manner. Historical documentaries made in this mode deliver a feel of straightforward and objective account and interpretation of past events. It is the form often associated with wildlife or historical documentaries, in which the viewer might feel in need of information about what they are seeing. The audience is left in a subordinate role listening to the version of events that the filmmakers chose to prioritize. A good example of this mode are An Inconvenient Truth of 2006, many science and nature documentaries like Ken the Burns' Civil War, Civil War of 1990, places, Robert Hughes' Shock of the New of 1980 and John Berger's Ways Saint of Seeing in 1974. On the Florida coast. More than 3 million Americans fought in it and over 600,000 men, 2% of the population, died in it. Observational documentaries. These documentaries attempt to simply and spontaneously observe live life with a minimum of intervention from filmmakers who is a neutral observer. Filmmakers who worked in this subgenre often saw the poetic mode too abstract and expository mode as too in instructive. The first observational documentaries date back to the 1960s. The technological developments which made them possible include mobile lightweight cameras and portable sound recording equipments for synchronized sound. Nothing is rehearsed or staged. The filmmaker is normally out of the shot so they cannot influence what is happening. This mode of film abstains from voiceover commentary, post-synchronized dialogue and music or reenactments. The films aimed for immediacy, intimacy and revelation of individual human character in ordinary life situations. Most of the nature documentaries came under this head. Frederick Weissman's films like High School, Gilles Grauls and Michael Brawls, Les Recruiteurs, Albert and David Maslis and Charlotte Zwerin's Gimme Shelter, D.A. Penn Baker's Don't Look Back about D Dylan's tour of England. Some of the other subgenres of documentaries under this mode are discussed here. Direct cinema, a documentary movement which started in the United States in 1960s, where the cameras act as an objective, disinterested observer, capturing events as they unfold. The makers urged to reveal personal and social truth, keeping a greater intimacy with their subjects. Direct cinema could record actuality in a way that achieved historical accuracy and authenticity. Cinema variety or the closely related direct cinema, this subgenre was dependent on some technical advances in order to exist. Light, 
quiet and reliable cameras and portable sync sound. Cinema variety and similar documentary traditions can thus be seen in a broader perspective as a reaction against studio-based film production constraints. Participatory documentaries. These films believe that it is impossible for the act of filmmaking to not influence or alter the events being filmed. A participatory documentary is where the events and situations presented are influenced and altered by the presence of the filmmaker. Not only is the filmmaker a part of the film, we also get a sense of how situation in the film are affected or altered by his or her presence. Often the filmmaker steps out from behind the cloak of voiceover commentary and becomes a social actor like any other. The encounter between filmmaker and the subject becomes a critical element of the film. A brilliant example of this is Surprise Me of 2004 and Vertov's The Man with Movie Camera in 1929. Reflexive Documentaries this is a documentary mode where the audience engages with the, with the content of the documentary as it happens. The audience are made aware of the making process throughout and also the editing, sound and recordings. It thus shows the, the constructive nature of the documentary showing not necessarily the truth but a reconstruction. At the simplest level, the film may make no attempt to hide aspects of its construction, showing us the camera people for example. How does the world get represented by documentary films? This question is central to the subgenre of films. They prompt us to question the authenticity of documentary in general. It is the most self-conscious of all the modes and is highly skeptical of realism. It may use Brachtian alienation strategies to jar us in order to defamiliarize what we are seeing and how we are seeing it. Examples include Bernoulli's Land Without Bread, Trinity Mina's surname Viet Given Name Now of 1989, Jim McBridge and L.M. Kit Carson's David Holtzman's Diary of 1968, David and Judith McDougall's Wedding Camels of 1980. Performative or Reflective Documentaries Performative or reflective documentaries are more about the subjective experiences and emotional responses to the world. Strongly personal, unconventional, perhaps poetic or experimental, they might include hypothetical enactments of events designed to make us experience what it felt like for the narrator. It presents ideas as a part of context having different meanings for different people and are more often autobiographical in nature. Using every kind of techniques inspired from avant-garde and fictional films, the subgenre might also lend itself a certain group like women, ethnic minorities, gays and lesbians to speak about themselves. Performative documentaries often link up personal accounts and experiences with larger political or historical realities. Examples include Alain Resnais's Night and Fog of 1955 with a commentary by Holocaust survivor Jean Carroll which is not a historical account of the Holocaust but instead a subjective account of it making it a film about memory. Each of the documentary modes that we have discussed here had period of predominance in given regions or countries, but the modes also tend to be combined and altered within individual films. Older approaches do not go away. They remain part of a continuing exploration of form in relation to social purpose. Another common genre of documentaries is the compilation film produced by assembling images from archival sources. The interview or talking head documentary records testimony about events or social movements. Propaganda film, a type of film that promotes a political agenda, was often conceived as a political weapon against neocolonialism and capitalism in the 1960s and 1970s, especially in Latin America. These propaganda films also influenced a whole generation of filmmakers. Historical documentaries such as landmark 14-hour work, Eyes on the Price, America's Civil Rights Years, 1986 Part 1 and 1989 Part 2 by Henry Hampton, Four Little Girls of 1997 by Spike Lee and The Civil War by Ken Burns told the history but expressed not only a distinctive voice but also a perspective and point of views. And finally, we have docufiction or docu-soap. Docufiction is a hybrid genre between two basic ones, fiction film and documentary. Now featuring the traits of documentary and soap opera, they have ordinary people as characters and construct their difficult life to reveal everyday crisis and symbolic tension in human lives. 
This derivative of documentary now enjoys prime time populist success though they can be intrusive and sometimes dishonest. This documentary is now purposive. It is intended to achieve something in addition to entertaining audience and making money.